three to five weeks. This is the latest statement from Elon Musk, and that means we still have about another month until SpaceX launches its gigantic Starship rocket. But don't be disappointed because everything has its reasons. This extended time will be when SpaceX takes the biggest strides in innovating the rocket launch and testing process, promising to make Flight 4 100% successful. In today's episode of Alpha Tech, we'll update you on all of SpaceX's activities at Starbase. The Starship is ready, but Elon Musk has still postponed the previous launch attempt. Why? What's the real reason SpaceX demolished the last remaining test site at the launch site? Let's get into it. On May 12th, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced that Starship might fly again in about three to five weeks. This revelation came after the Super Heavy booster was moved to the launch pad at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas for its fourth test flight. This would place the next launch around June, and I predict that it could happen June 14th, exactly three months after the third Starship launch. Do you agree with me? This is the perfect time to make your predictions. Share your guess down there in the comments. To be honest, the announced launch schedule for Elon Musk's fourth flight has been pushed back compared to the target he said earlier. However, the developments do not seem too strange to us, as in previous flights, Musk also set goals that deviated from reality. It's important to remember that the launch schedule is influenced not only by the readiness of the rocket parts, but also by the FAA's approval. And that may be the first and biggest reason why Elon Musk and Gwen Shotwell's original goals were broken. For example, during the preparations for Starship's second test flight, which was eventually launched in November, Musk had set a timeline of six to eight weeks back in April and again in June. In September, he announced that the rocket was ready to launch, but it was promptly denied by the FAA. It wasn't until early November that the launch prediction was actually accurate. The second reason for the scheduled delays can be seen in the latter part of Elon's statement. Objective is for the ship to get past max heating or at least further than last time. Indeed. Musk's primary goal for Starship's fourth launch is to survive re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. Last time, Starship flew farther than ever before and began the re-entry process, giving us an exciting view of plasma buildup on the upper stage. However, this process was not successful. For this fourth launch, Starship 29 still seems to be facing issues with its heat shield, as SpaceX has been continuously working on the nose cone and addressing gaps in the heat shield cover over the past two months. They've changed the adhesive and some techniques to secure the heat shield, but it remains uncertain if these will be effective. To achieve the desired success, SpaceX and Elon likely need more time and effort for better preparation. So, where are our ships now? Booster 11 arrived at the launch site early May 11th, and by noon, it had ascended the launch pad in just a half hour. Not idling, on May 12th, Ship 29 left the construction site, following in the nearly undisturbed footsteps of Booster 11, heading towards the chopsticks to be stacked on top the giant. Now the stacking of Starship could happen at any moment. Alongside the bustling activities to prepare for Flight 4, SpaceX has been destroying suborbital Pad B nearby. In our previous video, we predicted Ship 30's static fire test might be the last one at this launch site, and so far, that's been the case. After conducting the test May 9th, Ship 30 returned to the build site May 11th. Less than a day later, SpaceX workers began dismantling and clearing the historic test site. The work progressed rapidly, with the team starting by tearing down the structure and bulldozing the area to remove any remnants. This also involved removing the protrusion that separated suborbital pad B from the adjacent suborbital tank farm, marking the end of activities on the suborbital side of the launch site. Honestly, the destruction brings some nostalgia. After all, throughout SpaceX's development, we've become quite familiar with the test site for Starship at the launch site. Built in late 2020, the Test Stand B has a life intertwined with static fire tests witnessing Starship's daily growth. Test flights SN9 and SN11, as well as countless engine burns and static fires of subsequent prototypes, all took place at suborbital Plan B. However, the development of Starship and SpaceX is undeniable. We must always change to find better and more beneficial solutions. In 2023, many old systems at Starbase were dismantled, including those at the production site, mid-bay, low-bay, and production tent, making way for new installations like Mega Bay 2 and Star Factory. Furthermore, at the launch site, the destruction of Pad A's test stand in December last year further illustrates this ongoing transportation. Finally, it's time to say goodbye to Pad B and hello to new infrastructure, the second Starship launch tower. Soon, we will see the second launch tower quickly rising next to the first tower at Starbase. This week, significant foundational work has been observed, including extensive digging, the lowering of rebar, and concrete pouring. 
Once all preparations are complete, the construction of the main structures, including the orbital launch mount and the launch tower, will begin. It's unknown if there will be any improvements or changes in the designs, but according to many rumors, for larger starships, SpaceX will have to make suitable design adjustments, such as taller launch towers. Could there also be changes to the launch pad structure? Will they reduce the number of launch tower legs? Will there be any changes? Comment down there below if you have any idea. We'd love to hear it. The components of the second Starship launch support tower were assembled at Roberts Road facility in late 2022 and were fully transported to Texas by the end of 2023, ready for installation. So, where will the hot tests of Starship go from here? Well, nowhere other than the Massey Test Facility. What is the real reason that SpaceX is moving towards this area? First, the site served primarily as a parking lot for supplies and occasionally conducted can crusher tests, where frames clamped onto the Starship to test its physical strength. Over the past year, the site has evolved to perform more advanced tests, including cryoproofing and pressure tests. These tests involve filling the Starship's tanks with liquid nitrogen to check for leaks and ensure that the welds and metal structures can withstand extreme cold and pressure without straining or failing. But any Starship tests that use methane and oxygen, spin prime tests, and most importantly, static fire tests, had to be done at the launch site. That means evacuating everyone working at the launch mount, the chopsticks, or the tank farm, everyone out during the test, and bringing everyone back. And if there's a problem with the test, they might need to reset and do it all over again tomorrow. This, combined with the fact that the second launch tower is about to rise, makes all operations inconvenient. So Massey's site has had a new project recently to build the facilities to do Starship static fire testing there. Methane tanks, oxygen tanks, pumps and condensers, the hoses and connectors to plug into the ship, nitrogen lines to chill all the pipes before use. There's a lot of plumbing to install. But most importantly, they're building a flame trench. At some point soon, we should see a Starship being tested at the new static fire test stand and flame trench. This facility is now complete and can be activated at any time. This development will allow more frequent testing without the need to evacuate the launch site. Massey's location, being far enough from the main road, eliminates the need for road closures for these tests, though this might only apply to less energetic protesting. The downside is that this is the only Starship so far, and static fires of Super Heavy have to be done at the launch site, but who knows what they're going to build in the future. For a long time, the idea of Starship static fires at Massey's was a silly idea that would never happen. Once Pad B is gone, the various cryogenic tanks, pumps, and recondenses for it can also be demolished. A lot of that hardware was built years ago for the earliest sorbital hop test, so it's old and generally pretty small tanks. It'll be much more efficient use of that land to put in more of the giant tanks they use for the main tank farm. Remember, they're building a second launch tower, so they're going to need a lot of tank plumbing to supply both launch mounts. So the static fire facility in Massey's isn't that exciting in itself. It's just replicating what was done at the launch site up until this week. But the change is very exciting in what it'll allow them to do in the future. The craziest part of Starship development is that this is still the warm-up phase. Development is going to accelerate rapidly from here. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time.